The NZXT Kraken X61 closed loop water cooler might just be the product of choice for enthusiasts who want the performance of a custom loop without the hassle that comes with it. Today, let's see if that's true. Okay, sure, my custom water cooling setup is great for a few reasons. They can be aesthetically pleasing, give better performance, or maybe even run more silently. But the drawbacks of having to build it all out and everything you need to do in order to swap out components can deter some people like myself and force them to explore other options. In my case, I went with the Kraken X61 from NZXT. After a lot of research, I found that the best bang for my buck in terms of performance lied with this product. And since I was going with the top of the line processor with the intent of overclocking, I really needed that performance. My build includes an ASRock X99 workstation class motherboard with 64 gigabytes of DDR4 2800 RAM and the Intel 5960X processor. Thankfully, the processor I got has turned out to be a good pick in terms of overclocking, but let's start with the Kraken first before we dive into those numbers. The Kraken X61 is a 280 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. It's advertised as the world's first variable speed liquid cooler that aims to provide silent computing at light loads without sacrificing the top-end performance. It comes with 16-inch tubing for more flexibility during installation, and it has premium black-sleeved cables. It has hue-controlled RGB lighting on the main CPU block that can be easily customized through the desktop cam software to match any color that you need, and it comes with a six-year warranty. As for compatible sockets, well, I'll just list those at the bottom of the screen. Installation was a breeze. It came with plenty of screws and mounting plates for a number of different sockets. With my X99 board, however, all I needed to do was attach these double-sided screws straight to the motherboard and the Kraken X61 slid right on. From there on, all that was needed was to tighten it down and move on. I installed the radiator at the top of the case and put the fans above it in a pull configuration. Then, after connecting the power and fan controller cables, I was done. At this point, if I were building a custom loop, I'd probably still be in the planning stages. I'm just saying. Okay, so now that everything's installed and I boot into Windows, I download and install the CAM desktop software. This allows me to change the default LED colors on the CPU block and create my own fan profiles. I ran a few stability tests to make sure all was well with my installation, and then I moved on to overclocking. Okay, this is where the fun begins. After a little bit of trial and error, I was able to get my 5960X processor overclocked to 4.7 gigahertz at 1.36 volts. What is really awesome about all this is that my idle temps sit right around 26 to 31 degrees Celsius. Of course, idle temps don't really matter for this review, so let's see how it performed during a stress test. After running the stress test for 10 minutes, the max temps after the fan stayed at 100% speed ended up staying around 66 to 67 degrees. Now, I did hit a spike of 75 degrees, but that was before the fans ramped up to 100% while I just started the test. So from these numbers, I can say that the Kraken really does perform well. And when you're not putting any stress on your computer, it runs fairly quiet too. But that noise level will quickly rise as you need more cooling power. And although I did enjoy the extra performance and the times that I needed it, the noise level can get pretty high. With that said, let's listen to the different levels of fan speed. I will put my mic at a decent range from my computer and record it at speeds ranging from the minimum of 25% to 100%. Keep in mind that during this test, my GPU fans will not be spinning at all and the two case fans will be running at minimal speeds. So everything that you hear should be from the two fans attached to the radiator. This is at the minimal 25%. This is at 50%. This is at 75%. And this is at 100%. As you can tell, the Kraken X61 can get pretty loud, and it's this volume level that counts as my first negative to the system. I feel that with some better fans, I might be able to get the same or better performance with lesser noise. I think that sometime soon, I might look at upgrading to a set of Noctua fans. 
The performance of the system still gives me reason to recommend it to others as it handles high overclocking with ease. But now I want to talk about the software that comes with it. The CAM desktop application that controls the fan speeds and LED colors has earned sort of a love-hate relationship from me. I love the fact that it puts everything in my control and is easy to use, but I hate the fact that it has a few problems and it takes up a decent amount of resources to run. So let's start with the features that make it great. From the main screen, you can see all kinds of things about your system. This includes temps for your CPU, fluid temperatures, fan speeds, voltages, net usage, and even frames per second while in games. You can find a spec loadout for your system, control and configure an overlay for games displaying system stats, and you can customize the RGB lighting on your CPU block. As an extension to this application, you can even download an app on your phone that allows you to see these stats and change the speeds of the fan, which I must say is actually a pretty cool feature. Not saying that throughout the day I have an uncontrollable urge to check in with my PC to see how the temps are doing, but if you ever did want to do this, the feature is available. It's not all perfect though. Going down as my second complaint to the Kraken system is the stability of its software. Without warning, the CAM software has crashed on me three separate occasions during the last few weeks. This is an issue for me because the CAM software actually controls the speed of the fans. And when the software crashes, it doesn't pop up any kind of error. So for example, the first time it crashed was during editing. I was working on a video project and the fan speeds had been changing randomly throughout the project, depending on what I was doing at the time. I kept the small cam icon for the application in the system tray so I could always keep an eye on it and access it if I needed to. Well, at some point during my editing, the cam software stopped working. I didn't get any errors or pop-ups, it just stopped. To make matters worse, the icon in the system tray was still there, so if I were to glance down and see if it was still running, I would just assume that it was working fine. The problem was is that I was so focused on what I was doing that the fact that the fans were not speeding up anymore never actually occurred to me. So for about an hour, I was editing 4K video and reaching temperatures of over 80 degrees Celsius. Then when I went to export my video and started the encoder, after a few seconds, I realized that the fans were not kicking on and quickly went to check the software. As soon as I clicked the icon, it disappeared. I frantically checked my processing temps and found out that it was already at 89 degrees. So I had to stop my encoder to give me time to launch the CAM software again. I stopped the encoder because the CAM software, even with the top of the line computer, takes almost 30 seconds to load. But this really worries me because each time the software is crashed, I was there to start it back up again. But at some point, I might be doing something away from the computer and the software could crash, putting my CPU at risk. This actually makes me want to move away from the software and put the fans in the hands of the onboard controller. In fact, I'm pretty much set on that idea. As a side note though, the CAM software also likes to give me a ton of errors about the Kraken fans not even working. Of course they still are, but according to the software, they are malfunctioning. I have checked all connections, made sure it was plugged into the correct headers, and I set the BIOS to provide full power, but I still have this issue. One last thing is the resources needed to run it. Although it won't make any difference to me on my day-to-day -day activities, I do have to set the fans at full speed and then force close the application in order to do benchmarks. I've gotten considerable differences between CPU benchmarks with the software opened or closed. Speaking of benchmarks, I was actually able to hit 1810 with a Cinebench R15. Considering I was only able to get 655 with my old i7-3770, this has been a huge upgrade for me. So in conclusion, would I recommend the Kraken X61 closed loop water cooler to the everyday enthusiast? Well, yeah, I would. But I would also say that an upgrade to your fans could improve your experience. Maybe not a lot, but there could be a little bit of that top end performance. Although the included fans are not terrible, they do seem to have a slight grinding noise at low levels and can really get loud when you turn it up. Also, you can bypass the cam software and just use your motherboard fan headers if you wanted to. Even with the couple flaws that I mentioned before, the performance was still top notch. I was only limited by my CPU in overclocking and not by heat issues. If you have any constructive criticism or ideas for further testing, make sure to let me know in the comments below. As always, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button, and thanks for watching.